What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name's Lee and I'm a DIY electric skateboard builder. And in this series, we are prototyping and rebuilding my electric mountain board. This is video two, and it's gonna be about these puppies, BLDC motors what's inside, how they work, and more importantly, how to battle harden them. If you're just here for the battle hardening bit, this is the timestamp you need to go to. But if you're a little bit like me, a little bit inquisitive, and you wanna know how these things work, then stick around because we're gonna open this up and I'm gonna take you through how it works quite quickly before we move on to the battle hardening itself. But before we do that, guys, I just wanna say a big shout out to my patron supporters. You guys are absolutely awesome. I'm gonna be doing some patron-only giveaways and some patron-only content soon. So if you're not already support me on Patreon, you can do it from $1 a month. There is a link in the description, but thank you very much to all you guys that have signed up already. That is so awesome. Let's hit the bench, we'll crack this open, and we'll have a little chat about it. Right, okay guys, um, if you remember from the first video, I told you that I was gonna be prototyping these Alien Power Systems 6384 censored BLDC motor. Now, what does that mean? Well, a BLDC motor is a brushless DC motor. I don't know if you guys remember the old brushed DC motors where you just put a positive and a negative to the motor and it span. Well, these are the next generation on from them and they are brushless DC motors. So there's no brushes required for contact at all. And I'll show you how they achieve that in a minute. So because of that, consequently, there's now three wires um, instead of two. The fourth wire is a sensor wire, and this provides uh, positional information back to the speed controller from some hall sensors that are built in, and also temperature monitoring back to the speed controller. So that's what those wires there are for. So BLDC motors come in two flavors. They've come in inrunner and outrunner. This is an outrunner, and that means that the rotating part of the motor or the rotor is on the outside of the motor. The other type is an inrunner, and the rotor is on the inside, so nothing actually physically spins on the outside, but on an inrunner, the outside spins, that's the rotor. Because electric motors are made up of two parts, a stator and a rotor. If you were to look on the inside, you'd see the stator, which is those winds of copper that you see inside there, and the rotor is actually this whole outside bit, which is connected to the shaft, which runs all the way through the middle and comes out here. So the basic operation is signals are sent down these wires and that causes a magnetic field in the stator which attracts and repels the rotor and that makes the rotor spin and therefore the motor spin. So what is the difference between one of these new style BLDC motors and a brushed motor? Well, the brushed motors were quite electrically noisy. BLDC motors are more efficient. They don't have parts that are gonna wear out. Well, they have some bearings, but that's about it. They are less electrically noisy. They can sustain much higher RPMs and have to be geared in a lot of operations to make them um, usable. And also you can get rid of the heat out of these a lot easier than the old um, brushed motors. So there's, there's more reasons than, than that really for, for why we've all switched over to these, but that's the main reasons. And um, for this video, that's all we really need to know. So these have really took off in popularity in recent years. These are, I mean, really now you don't really get many brushed motors. So yeah, I mean, these are pretty cool. So this is a 6384 from Alien Power Systems and that is basically refers to the size of the motor. 63 is supposed to be the diameter of it and 84 is supposed to be the length of it. Although manufacturers do cheat quite a lot and when we take this apart, I'll show you that actually it's a little bit smaller than that. But um, yeah, I mean, that is essentially this motor. It's 170 kV. KV is to do with the way it's wound, how many turns of wires and how thick the wires are. And that changes the, the electrical, um, electromechanical properties of the motor, how much torque it can produce and how, how fast, how much it turns per volt, which is RPM per volt. Um, but we don't, I don't really wanna get into all that crazy stuff here. I just wanna show you the basics of this motor. So let's get it apart and we'll have a look inside. So to get these apart, the first thing that you have to do is, in here there's a C-clip, and if you can see that, we have to remove that C-clip, and then underneath it is some copper shims, and I'm gonna do that with a pair of C-clip pliers. So there's the C-clip. 
Now we want to catch these washers because we want, you, you might want to save them. I'm not going to be saving them in my application, but if you're going to put this back together, you'll, you'll want to save them. Now these might have taken on some magnetic properties. It might be hard to get off. Three washers on my motor. Right, the only thing now that's holding this motor together, believe it or not, is the magnetic field of the um, rotor. This could actually completely come apart now if we had the force available to do it. Now, doing it on these motors is quite, there's nothing to grab, there's quite a lot of force in there. So I've developed a tool. This is my uh, motor bell puller. It's quite simple, 3D printed tool. If you want one of these guys, I do have them on my shop, link in the description. They're not very much, I can make one of these and post it out to you, no problems. And if you are a patron, I'm gonna give one of these away to you guys and I will do a quick random generator and choose one of you guys, you're gonna receive one of these. So all you do with this is you just slide it over the shaft and you line up these holes with the holes on your motor. Then you wanna take your motor screws. These are from my Etox kit. I'm gonna bolt through the pulley into the bell. Cool, so once that's together, we can now have some leverage to be able to pull this motor apart. Now, I broke my hand, this hand, three weeks ago. Um, I'll put some pictures in now to show you. So some movements on my hand are really painful, so I might have to clamp this to the desk. But essentially, if you push this down, you see the motor starting to separate? Now this is super dangerous. You do not want to get fingers or part of your hand caught in there because when this snaps back together, it does it with phenomenal amounts of force. So you have to be really careful. I might have to clamp this to the desk because I can't. So normally I'd be able to just pull those apart, but I got so much lack of strength in this hand now. Oh, there we go. Okay, so on my motor, there were two shims right at the bottom of the shaft. So I'm gonna just gonna put those back on. Right, okay, now we've got the motor apart in two separate bits. I can take you through and show you what's inside. So this is your stator. This is your electromagnet. So when a current is passed down these wires, a magnetic field is created through these electromagnets here. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to see in there. Let me see if I can get the light on it. But can you see the phase wires are just, just go straight into, into the copper coils. At the top here, we have the sensor PCB. So this is the hall sensors um, that detect, well, in fact, you can see the hall sensors on the edges there. So they detect the magnets going past them and send positional data back to the electronic speed controller through this connector here. Also, there's a temperature sensor in here. I think it's a thermistor basically just detects the temperature of the motor and sends that information back to the speed controller. Speed controller wants to make sure that it doesn't overheat the motor. And obviously you've got bearings that support the shaft on the rotor. You've got one here, one on the other side. In fact, there's two here on this motor, which is quite nice. And this is the other part. This is the rotor, um, also known as the motor cam. It has the shaft that runs from the back here all the way through. And that is normally secured by one or two grub screws. This is a grub screw in there and there's another one on the other side. And inside the can you'll see there are bar magnets, permanent bar magnets. Now in your uh, VESC software, when you tell it how many pole pairs you have, that's telling it how many pairs of magnets we have. These are arranged in a north-south configuration across like opposites, north-south, across, all the way around. And these motors, or this one in particular, has 14 magnets and it has seven pole pairs. So that's a north and a south pair, it has seven of those on the inside there. And obviously what happens when the electromagnetic field is generated here, it interacts with these magnets and they get pulled around. In fact, I made a little aid to show you what happens. Um, that's the stator, the gray bit. And the yellow bit here is the rotor, but I've just taken a pair of magnets, a north-south pair and I'm gonna show you what happens. 
So the stator's fixed and, and the, it's actually the, the magnets, the rotor that rotates. So it's like that. So what happens, let's say the north magnet is just here, ne near the A. A magnetic field is generated that pulls that magnet to there and then that then collapses and the magnetic field is generated there, pulls it to there, that one collapses and then C does the same and now we've got the south coming close to A and now a magnetic field is generated in the opposite direction which pulls the south, same for B, same for C and then the north is back again and same again and that happens at an incredibly high cadence and that that rotor just spins round and round and round. It's happening, da-da-da, firing all the time, and, and you've got seven pairs of these magnets, so that's happening quite a lot. So anyway, on to the main aim of the video, and that's how do we battle harden this can to look like that. The easy way, because traditionally people use epoxy with microspheres um, and put it in the magnets, and it's a bit messy and it's quite difficult to do, but I have learned of a new method, and it's not my method, I'm not gonna take any credit for it. So credit to, um, I think Rich on the forum is using epoxy putty, and Big Ben started using epoxy putty. He's been using Milliput, uh, which is an epoxy putty here in the UK. And um, yeah, I actually had some already from a previous project, so I thought I'd give it a go and show you how easy it is to do it. So in the packet you get two lots of epoxy, it's like plasticine basically, epoxy putty. One's a, a, a resin if you like, and epoxy putty, and the other one's the hardener. I don't know which one's which, I think this is the hardener, the yellow one. Mine's getting quite old, but you can see it's like a, it's like a putty, a plasticine if you like. And um, we're gonna need to mix these in equal parts. So there we go, equal parts of yellow and white. Now until we mix these, they just stay in their putty form. Before we do that though, and start getting messy, we're going to protect the can a little bit. We're gonna use a sandwich bag or something with some tape just to protect the outside of the can. I didn't do that on this one. And you can see I've got a couple of spots of epoxy on it. It's not that bad. Um, but obviously if you're you know, looking for perfection, which I would like these to be perfect, then you should cover up the can. I've got some blue tape, so I'm just gonna use blue tape. There we go. So that's just gonna allow me to hold the motor when I've got putty all over my hands because this stuff is pretty, it just gets everywhere. Right, and now I'm gonna mix these two together. Might be better to mix it in smaller batches until you get some heat into it, until it starts reacting chemically, it's gonna be quite tough. Just keep working it and eventually it'll start to go soft. This is starting to soften up now. Obviously I broke my hand, like I said, a couple of weeks ago, so it's really tough for me to do stuff like this. So you'll know when it's mixed because you don't get any streaks. See here, it's still quite streaky, even though it's getting quite soft now. So I'm just gonna carry on mixing it until it's all one color. Right, okay, I've been going for about 10 minutes now and the streaks are gone. It's all one even color. And it's, you know, it's quite soft now, it's quite pliable. So I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with it. We need to get it between those magnets in those gaps. And we're gonna do that with um, a spatula, basically. We're gonna use this to smooth it. We're gonna create a sausage out of this. We're gonna lay it in the gap where it needs to go. And I can tell, tell already that light's gonna be a problem doing this. We're gonna lay it as a sausage and then we're gonna use the spatula to smooth it, smooth it down, all the way down. Now you've got three hours with this to get it in. So, you know, you don't have to mix so much. This should probably do all of it. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna smooth it afterwards and I'll show you how to do that as well. So you'll get a feel for the size of the sausage you need. I'm gonna guess at that for my first one. And then I'm gonna lay it in the gap. Don't know if you can see that. And then I'm gonna push it down with my fingers. I'm gonna make sure it's right to the end. And I'm gonna push it down. Take off the excess. So now we're left with that, right? And now I'm gonna use the spatula. I'm gonna push the epoxy all the way down. And this is gonna be really hard to show on camera, I know. Thank you. 
So after a couple of passes, that's what it looks like. Now, God, this is so hard. I can see in here there's a little tiny gap. And I'm just gonna use a bit, a little bit of the epoxy just to fill the gap. Push it in and then smooth it with the spatula again. Right, that is looking pretty good, guys. It's as good as you're gonna get it. Don't worry about getting it on the magnets and stuff like that, we're gonna sort that out. That's why this stuff is good, because it takes three hours to go off. So I'm just gonna make more sausages, I'm gonna go round, I'm gonna put them all in, all the way around, every single gap, and I'll come back to you. Okay, progress report, we are halfway through, look. Looking pretty good. Don't worry about getting it on the magnets, we'll sort that out later. I forgot to say earlier, but don't get any on the shaft. You can put a piece of heat shrink over the shaft if you want. If you're using regular epoxy, you definitely do that, but with this stuff, it's a lot easier to get it off, so I haven't bothered, but try not to get any on the shaft. And you can see my hands, filthy. Filthy, which is why we put the blue tape on here. So I'm gonna carry on, get this finished, I'll come back to you. Okay, just got this finished up. I used about half of what I mixed, but um, I just wanna show you what it looks like inside, just so you guys don't worry about making it too tidy when you do it. Um, as long as all of the gaps are filled and everything looks okay, don't worry about it being on the magnets. We're gonna sort that out now, but now's a good time to check everywhere and just make sure there are no problems because once we've done this bit, there's no going back. So yeah, I've checked mine and mine is all okay. And now we're gonna smooth all of these and we're gonna make it lovely. And we're gonna go from that to that, yeah? I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, so you wanna get yourself a glass of lukewarm water. It doesn't need to be warm or hot particularly. And some cloths. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna smooth this epoxy down. So the good thing is about this epoxy is when it's in this form before it's hardened, you can sculp it with water. So all we're gonna do, we're gonna use a little bit of water and we're gonna run it across the magnets and into those gaps. So we're just going down all the way along, cleaning the magnets and smoothing the epoxy. Now I'm pushing the cloth quite hard into the epoxy just to make sure it's pushed down all the way. We smoothed it with the, with the lollipop stick but now we're just pushing it down. And after a couple of minutes, that's what it looks like. Now, if you've got any on the shaft, now's a good time to use the cloth and just clean it off. We wanna get a dry cloth and go around now and just dry everything. So there we go, guys, look at that. Magnets are clean, all smoothed in. Looks really good, really nice. Looks like a proper job. And those magnets now, once this epoxy goes off in about two and a half hours, they ain't gonna move, they ain't gonna get knocked off easy or anything like that, so that should protect them. And that's stage one of the process. For stage two, you can go from this to this. Now, I know what you're thinking, looks a bit odd, but this stuff is rock hard and isn't coming off. And what I've done here is I've just protected the PCB and the hole sensors um, with epoxy. There's nothing metallic in this epoxy, so you should still be able to read the hole sensors with them covered. So it's up to you because obviously these bits are vulnerable, the wires here, the terminals from shorting with water, so you know, you can cover these up, you could use some sort of uh, rubberized glue if you liked, which might be a bit better, but I don't have that, I just have epoxy at the moment, so that's what I'm going with. And you don't have to worry about that stuff interfering with the can because you get a quite a bit of space between the can and the end of the stator. So now I'm just going to use what I've got left over, I'm just going to protect the stator. One of the most important things to protect is these wires because you don't really want them moving, so we can just immobilize them completely. Right, when that dries, that stuff is going nowhere. Now, you can take it even a step further and you can protect all the wiring and stuff in there. I'm not gonna do that because obviously the bolts go in there and I don't wanna mess around with them. And then the last thing to do to protect your motor, to battle harden it fully, is those grub screws that we talked about earlier, you can take those out and put actual um, socket cap bolts in, one on each side. I am gonna do that, but I don't have any with the correct thread, any in the right size with me at the moment, so 
I can't do that now, but yeah, removing those grub screws and replacing them with bolts is also a good idea because these can back out and then that shaft just spin, the, the, the can spins and the shaft doesn't move. So yeah guys, once it's done, it's just a case of putting the can back on. Now, if I were to just put that into there and let it go, that would slam into there incredibly fast and take some of my finger skin off and hurt me quite a lot and just be generally bad for me. So the way to do it is to do it very slowly and very controlled. Now I'm gonna use the clamp again to do it and I'll show you. Now because I've got quite low strength in one of my hands, I'm having to do it with the clamp, although normally I wouldn't need to do that. Whoa, see? <laughs> I, didn't, I wasn't expecting that, but uh, yeah, it's pretty violent. Obviously that can't go any further because it's clamped to the desk, but if it did, that could have been pretty bad. Just be careful guys, really careful. And just check for free movement. So obviously this is the one that I did days ago. The one I've just done is still drying. That's gonna take three hours. And then all you need to do is just remove the bolts, remove my puller and put your washers and your C-clip back on if you're doing that. We're doing a helical system, so we won't be putting the C-clip and the washers back on. So then guys, that is it. How to battle harden your motors the easy way. This one is done. I'm waiting for the other one to dry. And then they're done, basically. I'm gonna get those bolts in, like I said, but I don't have any with me at the moment. So guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, this is episode two of my series in prototyping and rebuilding my electric mountain board. In the next episode, we will be building the Etox mini uh, helical drivetrains up with these motors and having a look what they look like on that deck. So stay tuned and I'll see you next week.